now i'm gonna talk about incremental load so for the incremental load i will be using the same things but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create i'm gonna create a new uh, data pipeline uh, and i think i would need one more um, data set connection i'm just checking if that is existing over here yeah everything is existing i just start creating that so i'll create a new pipeline i will say it as incremental load sql load sql so first thing what i'm gonna do as i already told you i will be first i will have to fetch the data date on which the last load happened in the load control table i will have to fetch the data which is actually got changed in the source table so i will be using two lookup transfer uh, two lookup activities to fetch those information once i get the data over there then i will make use of it so one lookup for fetching the last up, uh, update date in the source another lookup for fetching the last edit last insert date okay let me make use of it extract last updated this is the name that i'm going to give for first lookup so what i'm going to do in the settings i will select the so stable user okay here i'm gonna query the data i'm using this query what is the maximum last date that it is fetching the data okay this is how it is and i can preview the data it will i have not insert this is showing as three i'll do one thing i'll quickly insert one more row which got changed later okay and and then it should show me the data uh, the maximum latest update date is five i'm inserting one more row in the in the source so now if i preview the data it should show fifth okay and for this the cup transformation i'm gonna use the query where is when is the last load date happen okay for that i will first give a name to this lookup it is called extract last load date in the settings i will select the table control and then i will make use of the query and then i will use this query for that let's preview the data see last updated date in the load control is three so this is about two sources now i'm gonna make use of the copy activity okay so i will be connecting these two outputs to the copy activity okay i'm gonna <coughs> in the copy activity this is incremental extract so the idea in the copy activity is i have to extract the data based on these two inputs okay i will go to the source table and put a condition saying from this source this is what i'm gonna get okay so here i'm gonna make use of the query in the add dynamic content i'm gonna use this query let's carefully observe here select start from the source table where the date 
factor is greater than last step and greater than the last step from the two lookup columns. Okay. So if I have to preview the data, I have to provide the input. So let's not do that. Okay. In the sync, I will provide the destination table name. Okay. Here I am going to hard code the table name called DBO user data. Okay. And this is the mapping. Okay. No need. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to what I have to do, I have to update the destination once the data is loaded. So I'm going to make use of stored procedure. I've created a stored procedure wherein I will pass the table name under date, which updates the table control information. Table control. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make use of Azure SQL DB and stored procedure is SP update load info. And as I told you, it got two parameters. So let me import the parameters. It should show the parameters names. Table name is <coughs> TBL user and modified date is, I'm gonna make use of this modified date. So basically it is this. And we have to fetch the first row dot what is the column output name we have given it's last m okay so we'll pass these two inputs to the stored procedure and stored procedure should update the data so let's run now So I'm going to walk you through each output. See, first it is executing. Last update date. This is from the table user table and last load date. So it will fetch the data. Date information from both the tables and it will pass the date information to copy data. So update the load control is failed. The last. Okay, we'll check that. Okay, let me, okay, I will, let's check that actually. First, we'll see what it extracted. It extracted the row that got last updated in the load control is, this is the data, 2021.3. In the last updated, it is 2021.5. So in the incremental extract, so one row got extracted, which satisfies the condition of greater than both of them. And here it got failed, we'll check the error message. So this, there is <coughs> last load date. So I need to change the column name to last load date. Fine. So I will go here and in the parameters, so I'll just copy this. I, I should have selected from the second activity. So that's what it happened. So now we'll again try to execute. This time it should update the data and everything should run fine because I have selected a wrong output column name. That's what the error showed there. 
I hope everything will be fine this time. Look at this. So this is 2021 five. It's 2021 three. And it should have extracted one row. And here also it, it is updating the data. What it is passing? Let's see in the input, which actually shows. So it is passing the date time and the table user column. Name. So now we'll go to the database and verify. So if I check the user data now, there will be two rows because I have run the table twice. So if I check the user data, it got inserted twice because it was not updated in the table control table. Now we'll check the table control. It should be five. Okay. This is different database. So here it should have got updated. Look at this case. That is all for this video. I will stop recording now.